All right, before we get started, many people have asked me if Woody Shaw is an influence on my playing, and the answer is obviously yes. About 10 years ago, one of his students uh, showed me some material that was passed down to him from Woody himself, and it pretty much changed the course of my playing in very measurable ways in a very, very short span of time. So that is true, and I also want to strongly say that the general jazz community has absolutely no clue about the level of proficiency and innovation contained within Woody Shaw's playing. You know, if you had had some kind of crazy fusion album or goofy gimmick, then maybe we'd be having a different conversation today. But I hope this lesson will inspire people to go out and check out his music. All right, so what we're looking at here is... Uh, the turnaround to There Will Never Be Another You, and these are the stated changes as I understand them. So what you're going to notice in this analysis is a series of somewhat pentatonic-based side slips and substitutions over the given changes. So I'm going to run through this fairly quickly. I think uh, if people enjoy it, I may do a whole lesson on some of Woody's techniques because uh, I spent a lot of time with them. But anyway, looking at the first bar, E flat major 7 to A flat 7, you can see it's he's pretty much playing in C minor figure over that. And everything is fairly inside. Not much to talk about. Things start to really happen in the second bar. We're looking at the G minor 7th. Um, the first half of it is pretty, pretty inside. Uh, it's kind of leading to the next idea which is this F-sharp minor triad over the C7th. If you look at what's contained within that, it makes sense. The C-sharp is acting as the flat 9, um, the A is 13, and the F-sharp is the sharp 11. So uh, that's a, a pretty common triad to play as, uh, as an upper structure triad over a dominant 7th. Now he kind of brings it back in over the F minor in the next chord, and he plays something which you could describe as either B flat pentatonic or F minor pentatonic, um, choosing on how you want to see it. So it's inside. So he does this perfect thing where he encloses an outside idea, slips in and slips out. Now this is where things get uh, pretty interesting here. When we look at the B flat seventh, you can see if you look at the figure there, He's, he's clearly outlining something which would relate to B dominant 7th, not B flat 7th. So he's side slipping out by a half step above. Okay, Looking at the next measure, which is E flat 6, you can clearly see that he's out, outlining an E natural 9 chord. See, because you've got the F sharp, which is the 9 of, of E natural. You've got the 5th, the 3rd, and the root. So what's happening there is he's actually creating a cadence, a 5 to 1 cadence over the B flat 7th and the E flat 6th, which is a half step above the stated chord. So he's moving the whole thing over by half step and then slipping inside to the E flat major 7th. Now, that's like a little bit complicated, but it's fairly simple. He's creating a cadence, a half step above the targeted root of the chord progression. Okay, so take some time, look it over, and you can see it's brilliant the way he slips in and out of these changes and creates an amazing resolution. <laughs> 